Hey, Joy family, happy Thursday. It is great to be able to come to you again today on this beautiful day. Can you believe it's almost Memorial Day? That's amazing to me um, that it is coming on us so quickly and things just keep going and going and going. And hey, speaking of that, remember to call each other, encourage each other, connect with somebody in some way today. Um, a great way you can encourage somebody is call them up and ask to pray for them. And speaking of prayer, uh, tonight we have our prayer night, our joy prayer night. We've sent out information about how to join that via Zoom on our website and our Facebook page and also on, via email. So make sure you get that and join us. It's only going to be an hour from 7 to 8 and we're going to lift up requests. We're going to connect a little with each other. Plus tonight, real exciting, um, we have an exciting announcement to you that we're going to premiere tonight at this meeting So um, during our prayer night. So. You, you don't want to miss it for that. Um, we're, we're, we have something exciting to share with you. So make sure you make that. But also Sunday, uh, just another reminder to um, join us at 10 a.m. via our live stream. You can go to our website, pick up our live stream or our YouTube page and see our live stream. We're in Romans chapter 12. So we're real excited to as we continue our journey through Romans and fight somebody else to check it out as well. But as we get to God's word today, we've been talking about this fight of our life, going 10 rounds in the fight of our life. And we've been talking about these struggles of our heart that lead to actions, but really they affect the way we love God and we love others. And these struggles, these heart struggles are what are at the core of God's 10 commandments. So that's really what we've been looking at is what's behind the 10 commandments or what the 10 commandments really are addressing. And the first four we've already looked at are all about how we love, love God. They deal with our heart struggle and our challenge in loving God. And then the last six commandments are all about how we love others or our heart struggle. And it's built on the first four. And we've already looked at our fifth commandment. We've been through five rounds already. And we looked at our first one of how we love each other. And that was honor your father and mother. And we say, yeah, that sounds great. But what what's at the heart of that is um, our struggle for independence, especially over authority and how important it is that we can submit to authority in a godly way. So today we enter the round for enter the ring for round six. And as you hear this command, you may say, oh, this is going to be an easy round. But be cautious. Sometimes we let our guards down and we don't realize how dangerous something is. So this round and this commandment packs a little more punch than we might first think. It's in Exodus chapter 20, verse 13. And here's what it says. You shall not murder. You might be like, I got it. Well, let's look at it a little closer. What it's talking about, it's talking about killing. Now, the word used here for murder is different than the word used for like killing somebody in a war or in self-defense. So this, this is different than that. And basically what it's about, it's about killing a person with malice outside of wartime or a um, self-defense situation. And this murder is a capital offense, according to the Bible. And at Genesis chapter 9, verse 6, it says, if you take a life, your life should be taken because we're made in God's image. Okay. Or if you murder somebody, um, you know, your life should be taken. And you're like, cool, I've got this. This is an easy one. I've never done that. I don't expect to ever do it. So I think I'm good in this situation. Well, maybe not so fast. You see, because Jesus in a Sermon on the Mount talked a lot about these commandments, these 10 commandments. And in talking about the commandments, he took them a little deeper and said, do you really want to know what this is about? And he shared about this command about to murder. And he says, it includes a lot more than just literally going out and killing someone. In fact, in Matthew chapter 5, 21 and 22, here's what he said. He says, you've heard it said that it, that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder. And whoever murders will be liable to, to judgment, the death penalty. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council. And whoever says you fool will be liable to the hell of fire. Wow. He's equating all these other things with murder. Or he's saying that this is what murder also is, being angry with another person um, in, a, in a way of malice, right? Or insulting someone or attacking someone's character, saying to somebody, you fool. This is starting to hit home a little bit more, isn't it? I mean, do you ever live in anger like this towards another person? You know, another way of understanding this command 
is is that this command to do not murder or you shall not murder um, is about coming to grips with our anger issues. Anger toward another person um, in this way is, is murder in God's eyes. And anger, anger is basically a response to something that's happened to us, right? It's, it's a response to an offense. And it means that, that because of this offense, we have hatred or ill will toward another person. Now you say, wow, this is definitely hitting home. And this is a lot easier to say it than do it because a lot of things make me angry. Well, a lot of things make me angry too. Um, you know, if you've ever driven with me, you can understand that. But yeah, I mean, a lot of things can make us angry. And maybe we need to get to the core of this commandment, really to the heart issue addressed so that we can understand it a little bit better and understand how to deal with it better. Okay, at the core of this commandment, you shall not murder. It reveals our opponent for round six in loving others. And here's the heart issue. Our struggle for control when offended. That's what this is getting at. You know, one of our greatest heart struggles is to uh, control ourselves when someone has offended us. When somebody has done something to us. Anger or literal murder is never isolated, right? It's a response to some offense against the perpetrator. The truth is, when things don't go our way, we get offended. We, when, when somebody physically hurts us, when someone cheats us, when somebody says something about us to put us down, or even when somebody does something unintended, um, it can have great effects. And, and, and it can make us feel vulnerable, weak, insecure, basically not in control, right? And as a, ref as a result of that, we feel we need to regain control of the situation. And this clash stirs up our need to make things right again. And this is what anger does. It's starting to really hit home now, isn't it? So at the heart of this is about anger. Now, how does this anger play out in our lives? This, this struggle to gain control. What does it look like? Well, Anger can look like lashing out. It can look like going mad and, and lashing out maybe violently or, or with your words or just, you know, exploding something like that, right? It can include lashing out. If you've ever done that because somebody has done something to you, you, you know what I mean. But it can also mean not just lashing out. Sometimes anger isn't seen as easily, but we still have it in our heart. For example, we hold in anger. You know, and we just let it build up and we let it build up and it affects us more than anything. And we can kind of shut down until it finally lashes out and explodes out amongst us, right? And a lot of times we swallow that anger rather than dealing with it. Or we sneak about. What does this mean? This means we try to gain control without looking like we're angry. This is what passive aggressiveness is all about, right? We don't want somebody to appear that we're angry to somebody, but yet... We really are, and we're just trying to sneak and manipulate our way to get back in control. And we do it because we're angry at somebody and there's hatred in our heart, but we're doing it in a way that maybe doesn't look as much like it, but it's still sneaky and it's still responding with anger, just sneaky anger. And we can all do this, can't we? And we can all see this at play in our lives. So how do we get to the point where... We deal in, with anger in a godly way, deal with an offense in our life in, in a godly way. Well, I would just want to share with you, just as we kind of close today, three quick ways that we can deal with anger or deal with an offense that happens to us in a very godly way. The first is to seek God. We seek God when we're offended. For a couple reasons. One reason is we seek God to gain a perspective when we're wronged. Sometimes when we're wronged and we take it very personally, but when we go to God and God says, this isn't really that big of a deal as you might be making it out to be. Let's look at it in the grand scheme of things. You know, this person made you feel like this, but I want to remind you who you are to me. You might feel unloved, but I'm here to tell you, you are loved. Don't worry about what they might say to you. You see, sometimes when we gain God's perspective on ourselves, we don't feel as weak or hurt or embarrassed. You know, we don't feel as vulnerable. When we go and we seek God 
and we gain his perspective, it builds us back up. And all of a sudden, we don't have to get back because, hey, I haven't really lost anything because I have God and he's got everything. Another reason why we seek God is for forgiveness. You know, um, being able to forgive somebody before they even ask us, we can forgive them. And we forgive it. We forgive a person between us and God. You see, that releases us. And it releases them from us having to get back at them. Okay? And it, it kind of sets the, sets the um, slate clean. And really what it does, more, more so than for their benefit, it's, it's forgiving them for our benefit. So then we don't have to carry that anymore. So that when we see them at the hall, in the hallway at school, or we see them at work, or, or, or something like that, we're not just going, oh, there's that person again. Ah, they're on my nemesis list. You know, we've wiped it clean. And we, we're free then to be able to have a relationship with them, to be able to build them up, and all, ultimately to see them as God sees them. Because when we seek God, we, we can learn to forgive them and walk with grace, just as God has forgiven us and extended grace with us. We can do that with others. So that's why we want to go to God when we're angry. We want to seek him and we want to hash that out with him. You know, I can't tell you the amount of times where I get frustrated. I feel out of control because someone's hurt me and I go to God. And you know what? God's got big shoulders and he can take that. And it's a lot better to be going to him and getting that out with him and saying, you know what, God, this wasn't fair. It didn't go right away. All these things. And God can say, all right, let me remind you who you are and who I am for you. And all of a sudden, God gives us his perspective. God gives us his grace that we can give. And God gives us his forgiveness. So this morning, you shall not commit murder. You know, round six, it may sound pretty easy. But when we see it in what murder really is and where it can be anger in our heart, anger in our actions and lashing out towards others because we're trying to gain control back because we feel like it was wrestled from us. Then it becomes a lot more common, a lot more of a dangerous opponent. Yet, God is greater still and we can go to him and be freed from that. So have a great day, Joy. Have a great weekend. I hope to see you tonight during our, our prayer night. And then on Sunday, I hope you can join us for our live stream. Have a great day.